So if you've got two buildings to connect, whether it's your barn, farmhouse, tool shop, or even two office buildings, you want to consider using fiber optic cabling. When I started my career, I dreamed of putting fiber in my house, but it was impossible. It cost thousands of dollars for a small spool. You needed special equipment, but now it is as easy as buying a pre-made cable. But what exactly is fiber optic cable and why is it so different than copper? Inside this plastic cable is a solid piece of glass that actually started out as a huge chunk. It was optically pure, then it stretched out to an insanely thin piece that reaches miles long. Now looking at this toy, it's exactly how fiber optic cable works. You've got a light on one end and it transmits the light to the opposite end. Now in this toy, you can see a little bit of light along the edges, but on optically pure glass fiber cable, you don't lose hardly anything. Now wait one second here, Grandpa. Don't you know that there are wireless options that could connect up these buildings instantly? Are you stuck in the 90s? Well, I'm absolutely not. I know plenty of wireless options I could use, but to get 10 gigabit speeds is impossible using a wireless choice unless you're spending an absolute fortune. So for someone at home that wants to connect up two structures and get a lot of speed, there's really no way to beat it except by using fiber. Why not just run a copper wire? Maybe you have some network wiring sitting around your house and you want to connect the buildings with those. Well, that is not something I would ever recommend. Anytime you're going to run copper between two buildings, those can be hit by lightning strikes, surges, and you can damage or destroy all the equipment on both ends. And fiber is not only cheap and the fastest, it's got another benefit that most homeowners never even think about, and that's that it's kind of like the Superman of cables. It is immune to everything that you don't want. So if you have a lightning storm, voltage spikes, interference, none of that stuff can hurt the fiber because the piece of fiber is made of glass and plastic. It's completely immune to that stuff. Fiber optic cable only has has one weakness, and that's that it can be damaged physically. So if you put a shovel through it, run it over with a backhoe, of course the connection will be cut. Now I'm really lucky here, despite my house being 30 years old, I discovered that I actually had an old empty pipe between the two buildings. I'm going to use this pipe to connect these two buildings together, and I'm going to do what some people say is impossible. I'm going to pull this cable with the pre-made ends on it directly through the conduit. And this piece of fiber is 260 feet long, and it only costs $68. But the best part about it is, this fiber can transmit up to 10 gigabits of information over it. That is an insane amount of speed to have at home. What do you do if you don't have a conduit? Well, it's best if you can run a pipe. That's handy for the future. You can pull additional cables. But fortunately, there's even direct variable fiber optic cable now. That means you can go out in your yard, just dig a trench, drop the fiber in, and you're done. Now I'm ready to start. Now your installation could be different, but I'm going to show you some of the tricks that I use to make this a little bit easier. I've got a conduit between the two buildings. I don't know anything about it. I didn't build this place, but I know that there is a pull string, and it is intact because I tugged on it a little bit, and it moved on both ends. Now you'd think you could just use this string, but this thing's 30 years old. You don't want to use it. So the very first thing you're going to do is tie a brand new string to the opposite end of this and pull the new string through the pipe. This way you don't have to worry about that old string being frayed or breaking during the process. That can be a real nightmare. So this string only costs 10 bucks and it's simple to attach to the existing string. And now I just quickly pulled this through. Okay. And we've got our new string. Anytime you find an old pipe in the ground, an electrical conduit, it's very often likely filled with water. Now I can't explain how the water gets in there. Sometimes I think it's bad joints under the ground, or maybe a little bit of rain just gets in these ends. But I knew for sure there was going to be water, because when I pulled the old string out, it was wet. So all I did was turn on my air compressor, shoved it in one end, I used some gloves to kind of seal the pipe, and gave it a blast. And as you can see, there was a lot of water in this pipe. Now this is the least expensive way to do this. I got one switch for the workshop and one switch for the house. But these ports are gonna be for things like computers, routers, even access points, but I need to connect them together. And what makes these switches so unusual is this port here, SFP. This little device is called an SFP module. And if you look closely, you can see that these plugs are gonna go into this and it will give us our fiber uplink port. Put in our top one, our SFP light, now our light's back on. So this cable is good. And now we get to the fun. I'm going to try to pull this thing through. But as you can guess, this piece of fiber optic cable can't handle any real force pulling on the ends. But the trick I'm doing here is I'm making a small loop in the Cat5 cable. Because the Cat5 stuff is tough. I can pull on this, but I'm going to tape the piece of fiber optic cable a few inches downstream. This way when I'm tugging on this cord like crazy, 
all the force is just going to go on the Cat5, and that fiber optic cable is kind of just going to go along for the ride. But I want to protect the ends of that LC connector, because that could get damaged. So I'm going to cut off an end of a glove, kind of use it like a condom, put it over this thing, and then I'm going to tape the entire thing up. You don't have to go crazy with this, because you're going to have to peel all this stuff off. Got our copper pulling portion, our fiber is in here, and we've got the line. So when we pull on this, it really should not be pulling on the fiber, and this should be kind of just trailing along. Now with my second volunteer, I'm going to carefully feed this fiber into the pipe. Now you can work on either end. I just felt like this open area was going to be better to do the actual feeding. All right, stop for a second. Why is this all wet? Am I touching something gross? It's just water. Make sure as you're feeding it through that the cable doesn't get bent. So feed it in slowly. Turns out this pipe was only around 220 feet long. So within a few minutes, fortunately the fiber emerged and everything looked pretty good. So I was pretty excited about this, but I still have some work to do. Now this part is gonna be different depending on what you've got in your structure, but I love to use this electrical conduit. It's cheap, it's easy to work with. And for things like fiber or Cat5 cables, it'll give them complete protection. When I was done, this is what it looks like in my workshop. I brought the pipe in through the conduit here. I've got this little access panel. Then it goes up the side of the wall. I ran that pipe up towards the ceiling. I wanted to make sure that fiber was away from the floor so that I wasn't stepping on it or causing any other problems. And now I can plug it into my switch and see how it works. These are one gig switches. Now they're not 10 gig, but the fiber can do 10 gig in the future. These switches are only 50 bucks. I am gonna do 10 gig at a later date, but this was a cheap way to get this project done. And when you add in the fiber and things like the pull cord and stuff like that, I still only spent about $200 for this really high speed data connection. If you've got two structures that you wanna connect, whether it's your shed, barn, garage, or even doing it for a business, fiber is almost always gonna be the best choice. It's immune to interference, surges, any of the bad stuff, and it gives you the most speed, and in most cases, it's actually the least expensive.